Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, for whom no door is closed, no heart is locked, draw us beyond our fears. Help us to see the wounds of Christ's body as the wounds of this world. Help us to love as you love, to heal the broken, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and all for your sake. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, 
He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. For one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of their places where they would live, so they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring." Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead." The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 66, verses 7 to 18. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his hand to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You have brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. Let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fast, fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me. He has attended to my vo- the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld his love from me. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, and is at the right hand of God, with the angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Last week, I spoke about the value we can find in the legacy of our ancestors and the way they navigated the challenges of life and the way they managed the tension between faith and fear. These ancestors include those from each of our own families as well as the biblical ancestors whose stories we hear in scripture every Sunday. My ancestors all converted to LDS, the Mormon Church, and moved to Utah in the 1800s. One ancestor was in the second wave of pioneers. His name was George Washington Hill. He was from Ohio, but he traveled to the South where he married Cynthia Utley Stewart. Cynthia's family lived in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. They owned a plantation and probably had enslaved people. But after Cynthia's father and the rest of the family converted to LDS, no one in the area would do business with them. Her father died and Cynthia and her mother and brothers decided to abandon the plantation and move to Utah. George converted to LDS in order to marry Cynthia and he too traveled to Utah. George spent most of his time with the Shoshone and even created a dictionary of Shoshone and English words to help the settlers and indigenous peoples speak to one another. His story is interesting, and I'll share it with you one day. Cynthia, from what I have read, had little tolerance for the indigenous peoples, considered them savages, and spent her days managing the household, which was in the middle of nowhere, and the many children she had with George. Although many of my ancestors moved to the, the United States in the 1800s, some, like Cynthia and George's family members, had settled in the USA in the early 1600s. One thing the LDS do well is to keep a history of family members, and so I can find letters written by many of my ancestors describing their lives, including some written by Cynthia and George. However, the stories are always written with a perspective that values their stoicism, their tenacity, their faithfulness to the LDS Church and its teachings, and minimizing what must have been very difficult lives, particularly for the women who often ended up in polygamous marriages with a household of children whom she had to raise mostly alone since her spouse was obligated to multiple families and the challenge of supporting them all financially. Our reading this morning from 1 Peter continues to address hospitality and hope and now brings in the idea of love of treating one another with love. The love that First Peter is addressing is the challenge of maintaining love in and through the challenges of living a Christian life, a life that often includes suffering. Jesus' suffering is the primary example Christians have for navigating the tension between faith and fear and doing so with love. Jesus' suffering came as a result of his life and mission to overturn the oppressive rule of the Roman Empire. Because Jesus wanted to dismantle the oppressive rule that the Roman, that the emperor had and his military had over ordinary citizens like the Jewish people and the emerging Christian people, the emperor viewed Jesus as a threat. He was crucified in order to stop his movement. However, as we know, that effort failed. The teachings and the love of Jesus live on in the world. 
They've lived on for over 2,000 years, transforming people throughout all that time. People who have been moved by similar love and desire to create a world where all people could live whole and healthy lives. An example of the power of Jesus' teaching to love God, love ourselves, and love our neighbor is found in the transformation of Saul into Paul. Our reading this morning from Acts completely skips over how Saul is converted and becomes Paul, but it is a powerful experience of transformation. Paul transforms from someone who persecuted Christians to becoming one of the most influential Christians in history. He formed many churches and supported their efforts to define who they were and help them navigate conflict, encouraging them to love one another. The love that Jesus, Peter, and Paul are talking about is not the romantic kind of love we think about in our lives today. The English language only has one word for love, though other languages have several words for love, including words like agape, hesed, eros, and philia, which we hear about in scripture. Each of these words nuances love and deepens its meaning beyond the sort of hallmark romance love that's promoted in our English language today. Jesus, Peter, and Paul use the word love as a verb, not a noun. It's an action word. Love is what one does, not how one feels. To love God, love ourselves, and love others is to work to create the conditions where all people can live whole and healthy lives. This is the kind of love in action that I imagine my ancestors were seeking when they moved to Utah. They were hoping to live lives of transformation. They were hoping to create a community where all people could live with the same access to the necessities of life and thereby live whole and healthy lives. Sadly, human beings being who humans are, their hopes and dreams for love and action did, did not always turn out as they might have imagined. But they left me a legacy to strive for. This is the legacy that we hear in our scripture readings, the legacy we have been given as a people of faith. How will you put love into action in your life? How will we as a faith community put love into action? How might we become agents of transformation in our time and place? Questions to ponder each day as we seek to love as God loves. Let us profess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Filled with joy on this royal feast of feasts, let us offer prayers to God who leads the people through the Red Sea waters. For the Holy Churches of God, Jennifer, our bishop, all bishops, priests, and deacons, for this holy gathering and for all the holy people of God. For the world and its leaders, our nation and its people, glory and praise to you, O living God. For those in need, 
the suffering and the oppressed, travelers and prisoners, the dying and the dead, for ourselves, our families, and those we love. That our Savior working in us may heal this broken world. Glory and praise to you, O living God. That with Christ we may overcome evil, restoring justice and compassion. That Christ may fill us with the joy and happiness of his holy resurrection. That we may enter the chamber of the divine wedding feast and rejoice without limit with angels and saints. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Remembering Mary, your faithful disciple who birthed love into the world, remembering all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, for the gift of new life in your Son, Jesus Christ. Hear the prayers we offer this holy day and grant that we who have received new life and baptism may live forever in the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us pray. In union, O God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May you be a new creation, Christ for those to whom Christ shall send you, and the blessing of God our Creator, Redeemer, and Giver of life be with you always. Amen.
Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love as God's love has been revealed to us in Jesus. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.